Hey, it's Chris here from Boater Trout Fitters, and today we're going to tie a very simple flashback pheasant tail nymph. Now you can see we've got the hook here with a bead on already. Again, I like MFC's tungsten lucent beads, but you can use whatever you like. We'll wrap on our thread here, cut off the tag end. And once you've selected your pheasant tail fibers and you're going to build this tail, I find shorter's better. You see a lot of people put the tails basically the length of the hook, but I like to go quite a bit shorter. Now I'm building a ball at the end. You can see that here and it'll just help those fibers to splay out a little bit, spread out when you tie it down. There's another nice technique where you can leave the tag end of the thread and pull it in between the fibers as well. I'm going to use this technique here today. So we've got our pheasant tail fibers moving forward from that point and now we're going to do is uh, just put a couple wraps and then we're going to tie in our wire. Now I like to tie in my wire as a rib but I like to keep it a little bit longer. You can see it's touching the bead uh, here and the reason for that is I'm going to fold it back on itself. That's going to lock it in place but it's also about building a taper for this hook. Uh, when you wrap something like marabou or pheasant fibers over the hook, whatever is laying underneath, it's going to conform to that shape. So I'm using the wire here to build up a bit of a base. I'm also using the thread to build up that same taper. And now we start wrapping the pheasant fibers. And I'm going to wrap in the same direction that my thread is going. That way, when I lock it down at the end with the thread, the thread's going to work with the curve and lock it as opposed to pushing it backwards on its Itself. Now we are going to wrap the wire rib and that has to be in the opposite direction. So what I like to do is make my segmented body, but then I go well past the thread itself and do a whole bunch of wraps with the wire, as you can see here, just to help keep it from undoing when I lock it in place. Now that we've done that, it's time to put in the flashback uh, tinsel. So I'm just using a pearl wide tinsel here, locking that down in place and I want it curving away from the hook, as you can see there. Now we're gonna put some dubbing, but just a tiny ball here. So I'm gonna wrap it down, just a couple wraps with that dubbing ball, and that's gonna lock down the flashback, but it's also gonna now help the legs splay out a little bit nicer as well. So here I'm just using flashaboo legs. You know, you could use midge flash, anything like that, crystal flash, and I'm just building up my legs here. Pinch wrapping those down on both sides so we get that nice X pattern. And then what I'm going to do is add more dubbing to the thread here. We're now going to go in between those legs as well as in front of them and create the body here. Now I'm dubbing here, pretty thick uh, dubbing. I like to use hens, hair, UV dub. It's got light, nice thick guard hairs, but a little bit of flash in there as well. And again, I'm using this not only to build up the thorax, but also to splay those legs properly. So now all we do is simply fold the flash back in front. I screwed it up the first time there, but there we go. Try again, fold it back on itself to lock it in place, and then clip off the excess. And it gives us that air bubble and that little bit of flash on the back. A Little bit more dubbing to clean it all up, and then we're gonna whip finish that off. This is a very simple fly, as you can see, but it's a very effective nymph pattern. Here we used pheasant tail, but you could also use marabou and wrap it in the exact same way. Uh, there's lots of different uh, materials you can tie these out of. Hopefully you enjoy that. You can see it there. Clean up the legs and you are ready to fish it.